Now this is a really common plant that you guys might be finding along the edges of roadsides, old agricultural fields, even in your lawn and garden. Like right now this one that we're looking at is growing right up against my mini barn right here in my yard. You can see a couple more over here and you can see one growing right here and then if we look over here we can actually see some more growing in this old old torn up uh, raised bed. Now this is an incredibly easy plant to identify and some people will confuse this from a distance uh, with winter cress. However, if you look really closely, we're going to notice these flowers are not only a little bit more numerous than winter cress, but their petals are also a lot more numerous. If we look at these flowers, we're gonna count anywhere from 15 to 20 petals per flower. And the flowers are kind of growing in like a radiant disc, kind of like what you would expect in like a dandelion sort of situation where the flowers are radiant around. So these are really, really easy to identify. To identify. Now let's take a closer look at this. Whenever we look up close, we're going to see all these little flower buds. You can see all these little flower buds coming out here at the top and all these mess of flowers. And each plant can actually produce, each butterweed plant can actually produce dozens and dozens, if not over a hundred flowers per plant, as we can see here just on, whoops, as we can see here just on these two, this one back here is a different one. We can see on these here, all of these flowers, and if we go down the plant, we'll actually notice in the, whoops, here we go, we'll actually notice in the nodes, more flower buds will start to come out. And we can see this stem coming out of the leaf node where the, whoops, come on, focus. We can actually see this stem growing out of the leaf node where the leaf petiole joins the main stem, and we're gonna see even more flower buds. And this is a very typical feature of butterweed. And now there are several other plants that are called butterweed. So I want you guys to keep that in mind that not every plant called butterweed is the exact same. Now this plant can grow to varying heights. And the ones that we're looking at in front of us are probably about three feet tall versus this one over here is about three and a half feet tall. And then we have these little ones growing here that are only maybe about a foot to a foot and a half tall. So there's gonna be a lot of variation in height in your butterweed. And some are also going to have variation in how far the leaves are spaced out. We can see on these, the leaves are actually a little bit more spaced out versus on these, the leaves are a little bit more dense in the way that they're growing. So let's take a look at the growth form of these leaves. If we get down towards the bottom of the plant, we're going to notice that the leaves will grow in a basal rosette or a circular fashion, as we can see here at the basal leaves. Now these leaves are very deeply notched and all of the leaves on this plant are deeply notched. However, if we go a little bit up the plant, not only do the leaves get much larger, if we look close, we can see there's actually a little bit of a wing, if you will, like right here, and then right here, we can see this little wing growing along the leaf stem. Versus on the basal leaves, we don't really notice that little green wing of the leaves. Now, once we get towards the top of the plant, we're going to notice a little bit more different of a leaf shape. They're still very deeply notched, but not as deeply notched as the lower leaves. And this is literally right underneath the very top of the flowers here. And we can see these stems coming out, producing more flower buds. Now, as we look on the main stem and the nodes, we're going to notice this little purple tinging or purple striation. That's kind of an important feature for Pacara glabella or this species of butterweed. Another thing that we're going to notice if we look at the leaves, they will grow in an alternating pattern. So we can see this leaf growing down here by my pinky and then this one up over here. So these leaves are going to alternate on different sides of the stem going up the plant. And you, we can see how these leaves start to get a little bit smaller once we get toward the very, very top. And then the largest leaves are usually going to be about midway on the plant. Like we can see here, this leaf takes up pretty much my entire hand. The leaves can get really, really large. Another thing we're going to notice about the leaves is that they are somewhat toothed, though they're not serrated like you would expect to see on something like a nettle, or they're not as also not as deeply toothed like you would see on like a wintercress species. And if we go down the plant, you can see again what I'm talking about, these very shallow teeth growing along the margins of the leaves. Now the stem of butterweed is round, green, and it feels kind of stiff, but if you squish it, it does have a bit of give to it because the inside of the stem is hollow. 
This is one of the main methods of this plant to transport water and nutrients up and down the plant so that way it can distribute the nutrients evenly. Also if we look at the stem we can see that it does have these very deep notches or grooves running lengthwise down the entire stem. And this is another key feature of Pacara glabella that separates it from a few other butterweed species. Now again, this is a really easy plant to identify and something to keep in mind is this plant is poisonous. It's poisonous to not only humans but also livestock as well. So this is something that you kind of want to keep in mind like if you have a, har a farm or a homestead then you definitely want to make sure that your animals aren't eating this plant because it can actually cause symptoms of poisoning. Um, this plant does have some medicinal uses but I'm not going to talk about those because it's a little too dangerous for me to cover those and I'm also not terribly familiar with its medicinal uses. But this plant is known to be poisonous to uh, pretty much all mammal species so make sure you keep that in mind that whenever you're seeing this plant covering agricultural fields this time of year that does not mean that you can just go out and harvest it and eat it. Something else you might notice on the stem of butterweed is that on the edges of the grooves you might notice these purple striations running lengthwise up and down the stem. Now not every plant is going to have this like for example if we look at this one it's a lot more faint on this plant than it is on this plant. Now if we look at this one again towards the base we can see it on one side but not so much on the other side. So there is going to be a little bit of variation and this purple tinging and these purple striations running along the stem. And now these purple striations will start to disappear the higher you go up the plant and the stem will just start to turn more green. So that's how you guys can identify butterweed or Pacara glabella by its Latin name. I thank all of you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about wild edible or medicinal plants, please make sure to subscribe.